guys, big things are afoot in the form of two shows happening in this January at Dynasty Typewriter. On January 11th and January 18th, Carrie and I will be taking to the stage in, Lo- in our hometown of Los Angeles to pod live. Come see us both nights. Come see us one night, but either way, just come see us. It's it's It feels like it's far away because it's in the next year, but it's really only like two months away. Yeah, it's, it's Less close. Less than two months. It's quickly approaching. So, so get your tickets now. There's mm-hmm. a link in the description of this episode. We'll see you there. If you're so inclined. Two dogs in the house. We've got hoes in the house. There's some hoes in the house. There's some dogs in this house. There's some dogs. Mango's Mango's, fresh. Yeah. He just got groomed. He's page boy once more. Sir, come here. Tony's feeling understandably needy in this time as a new a new being has entered his space. I think Mango has made it known that he's king of the sofa <laughs> and no Tony's one else. Tony's not happy. Tony needs to stand down. He does. And he is standing down. It's, He's you know, going it's, lap it's, mode. It's simply an age thing. Yeah, and I think they're both alpha they're dogs. Alpha. and um, It's fine. They're being peaceful. Yeah, they're good. Um, I talked to the pet psychic this week. Oh I'm my God, so tell excited. me about it. Well, we've just had our pre-call. Okay. So it was like a consultation. Just a consultation to kind of get right. each other's bearings. And I sent her a couple of photos that she's going to communicate mm-hmm. with. And she asked me what I want to know. And I just said, I want to know everything. I want to know all the thoughts that are going through his head. What he likes, what he doesn't like, what he wants more of. Even though I can guess all those things. Right. So she sees a photo and then sort of channels through the the picture. Yeah. Okay. And she starts the conversation with the photo. And then she said that I, she would like it if I would give him permission to speak with her whenever she tunes in. Because um, some dogs like won't, they're, they're like protective or like they don't want to say right. too much. I was like... I'll give him permission, but I don't think he, he'll, I don't think he has any qualms. I think he's ready to share. So she basically, at some point, Tony's going to get like a, doot, doot, like a, like the Euro call tone, mm-hmm. ringtone. And then he's going to go, hello. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be her. He'll go, Tony Shane Hall's here. Tony Shane Hall's here. And then they will communicate in whatever way. But you, I guess sometimes there's words, sometimes there's right. just feelings. But you have to give him permission to speak with her. I said she's going to be getting in touch with you and please like tell her whatever she needs to know. You can talk to her about anything. Maybe it's her right Maybe now. Maybe she's in tune right did, now. What did he say? He when you, just when you, looked at me. He was like, all right. Yeah. Okay. I said, you got to tell her everything. And then she was like, is there anything off limits? Like... Is there anything like you don't want me to talk about with him? And I was just like, no, no. But in she, I was like, why do you, ask? I just like, don't want yeah, him. Yeah. I mean, the only thing I would be like, I would hope that he wouldn't be like, sometimes she like masturbates. Right. Like, I don't want him to tell her that. Well, yeah. yeah but I don't like, think he would. No, he wouldn't blow up I don't think he knows like what that, that is. What's no, happening. I don't think they, yeah. they put that together. Yeah. They don't get it. Um, but that's the only thing that like crossed my mind. But then <laughs> she, I was like, why my do you mom ask? Beats off. <laughs> Some days. Like a, my mom draws. He just says that sound. She's like, he just kept going. Zzz. No, they don't know what that means. No, they're like out of it. And I was like, why do you ask? And she's like, well, you know, one time I had someone whose pet was saying that their owner cries all the time. And then I tried to bring it up and she was like, didn't want to speak on it. And I was like, no, I mean, I want to know, like, whatever he thinks is going on. I, for some reason, I thought she was going to come over and like sort of. No, doll, this is the new age of remote working. <laughs> no, I feel, I mean, I get it. All Jackson's a pick. No, I've been, I've had energy severed so over the phone, so I got it. It was over the phone? Yeah. Cool. Um, No, I believe in, I believe in remote. I'm just mental, down. Mental. I'm I'm down for you and I think if it feels like it was fruitful then maybe I'd Oh yeah. 
But I also I'm about to blow up her spot if it feels fruitful. Like I'm literally like she doesn't know this, but I'm like ready to change her life. You know what I mean? This but, is like Shark Tank. Right. It's psychic tank. And this is like a test run. Maybe we should have her on one day. I know. Because I, I just thinking... want to like know like her. How did. Is it like a kind of a Dr. Doolittle sort of situation where like. Or she like... said she has a mentor. I think a lot of psychics and like telepathic people have mentors that like help guide them through their abilities and stuff. But then she said one thing where I was like, hmm, where she was like. Sometimes, like, she's like, I have pets, and, like, I don't even know what's going on with them. And I was like, but, but why? Yeah, I would be like... I was like, hmm. Yeah. I didn't love that, but I'm still open. Where I'm is she located? I'm ready for Don't know. Don't know, in don't Cal- care. In California. Oh, okay. In the state. Yeah, but I don't know, like, her exact location. Um, It's interesting. I, I mean, I believe... I think it's possible. I think that there's... I feels more likely to be able to do it with people, your own species, but just a vibe. It might just be a vibe. I mean, sometimes I feel like I can tell what mangoes. Obviously, I think everyone with their pets sometimes can tell what they're feeling. Mm-hmm. But it is hard and it's mysterious, and I kind of like the mystery. Yeah, I like imagining what his voice would sound like if he was a human. Mm-hmm. If it would be high or low. I think it would be distinguished. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And sometimes if I'm like walking him at night, I'm like, please poop, please poop. And he does. But I think it's more of just like knowing his, his, yeah, his routine. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's interesting. I'm excited for you. I'm excited too. I love, I just like. This is something that feels right for you. I feel like you f- are very connected with your dog. And I feel like out of anyone I know with, who has a pet, you're like, I must know what he's thinking. Mm-hmm. Like you, it, you would need to know what he, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and like, it's just the way your dynamic is. I want like no barriers. I want to know. Yeah. I would love, well, fuck. I need to text her and tell her to tell him to stop barking in the fucking car all the time. <laughs> he barks in the car. Oh my God. Carrie, it's like. <laughs> You're like, I'm going to crash this no, fucking thing. No, I day. literally am about to crash every time he's in the car. What's he he like at? wants me to crash. I don't know. That's the problem. I really need to get this on her radar sooner before she has the conversation. In his little bed. Oh, he it's a battle to get him to sit in his little crate in the car. <laughs> and then he's like fucking losing his mind. Right. He tries to bust out of the crate, wants to cr- crawl everywhere. He doesn't want to just chill. He yeah. wants to be like incredibly active. And like he forces the worst version of myself to come out. He's robust. Like the only way to get him to stop barking in the car is to make eye contact and scream at the top of my lungs for (laughs) him to stop. I have to like dom. I have to like out bark him with my own bark and then he'll be like. I have to say, I don't like that. Mango is very, he could be in the car. He's so chill in the car. He could be in the car like for a day and just be like i love it but no it's some i mean there it think about it it's, i understand why dogs would be freaked out being in a car it's like it's a weird premise yeah but i'm also like you didn't used to be like this maybe there's a ghost in your car maybe we've got to figure something out i i still need to give you that info for that psychic i met at the houdini party yeah when is that coming down the pipeline i'll get it to you you're gatekeeping i'm not gatekeeping she is she is a she's gaslight gate a psychic to the people girl boss girl the boss psychics ga- info uh-huh. all i want to do is speak to various psychics i know see what's going on with the vibes and the other side i'd like to really have one on i think it i think consulting with a psychic in the hot ho- during the holidays is pretty important yeah i think during the holidays or like around the time of your birthday like mm. i think any time of year once a quarter is a great time to talk to a psychic remember when Danielle, remember when Jacqueline on Tough Sicilian Bitches goes, speaks with Danielle psychic over the phone? Mm -hmm. That was kind of like the first time I've heard of an over the phone psychic like that. Her healer. Her healer. Mm -hmm. Being like, I'm transmitting to you right now. And Jacqueline was like playing solitaire on her Blackberry. Fucking bitch. Yeah. She, if you're not open, nothing's going to happen. Exactly. Yeah. She didn't even give her a chance. Wasted. Wasted on Ms. I'm 
so deep into this past season of Real Housewives of Orange County now. Like, I'm literally, love it. I love it so much, mm. but I'm also devastated because there's this new cast member who just came in like a wrecking ball. Noella. Noella. And I find out she's gone. She's gone. She got fired. That's, I mean, it's, it's weird that they would give her so much of like a plot and like so much screen time and then be I like, think she demanded, like, I don't think she gave much option. It was just like plot, plot, plot. She's insane. She's insane. But it's like, <laughs> is she like dark sided? It's dark side. It's just also like a level of narcissistic energy that just sucks all the air out of the room. And it has to be about me, me, me. And they were like, they can't, you can't have, especially someone new. You can't have that. I know, but it, it, it's really compelling. Mm -hmm. And I think, but I see moments of there are moments when I'm watching it and I realize that eventually everyone would probably refuse to film with her and you would have to then hire some of her friends who are right. also like Monsters. weird models like ex models that now just date wealthy guys was she a model yeah she's a model and was married to that sweet james guy oh, but right. then he's divorcing her and i guess she's with some other rich guy now um because i follow her on instagram i was like keeping up but she just volatile it's not even volatile. It's just like she does my favorite thing where it's both it's faux humility and like faux sweetness. Yeah. Where you're like, oh, or you're just like, it's like a who me, but that's like really sinister uh -huh. and like totally fake. Like any sort of care that she tries to put forward about other people is just so centered around her own selfishness. It's like has an agenda. Yeah. And her the agenda is just like to center herself in the conversation. But I love it. Yeah. I. She's truly unhinged Gemini energy in the best way. Perfect for television. How old is she? She's 38. She's 37, like, 38. She's, she's like I a mean, peer of ours. They put her in. Or a peer of yours. They do. Um. <laughs> I'm going to let that slide. <laughs> I'm kidding. They do a sweat lodge in Mexico and it's like her and this girl Gina and Emily. And I guess sweat lodges can bring up all sorts of shit. Demons. demons. But the demons came out and like Emily is like bawling, crying. She's like, I don't even know why I'm crying. I'm crying so hard. Emily's the one with and the is like, husband. Yeah. And she cut, she looks like a drag queen. Like she has <laughs> huge drag queen energy. I love yeah, her, yeah, yeah. but it's like, it's very much yeah, yeah, yeah. the drag brunch right. whenever she's on the screen. And then, <laughs> Noel is like also crying and then Jean is like, I don't even know what's going on, but sitting in the middle of you two and you're both crying, it's making me really emotional and I don't know. And they're all like losing their shit. And then finally Noella just like passes out and they're like, We gotta get her out of here. We gotta get her out of here. And she a producer had to come carry her like a she little loved it. meatball. She loves it. And she's like, oh. Well, that was crazy. Like uh, <laughs> crazy? that happened. She's like, Well, that happened. Like it's that, it's that kind of vibe, mm -hmm. but I'm like, I need this. I crave this. I accept nothing less than this, except I do. Cause now I'm going to watch whatever the next season is. But I think also she beefed so hard with Heather Dubrow and you just can't beef with the Dubrows. Like right. Bravo will side with them. She's one of Bravo's favorites. And I honestly, Heather Dubrow is changing my life. She's pretty inspirational. She honestly I'm starting to ask myself, like, what would Heather do in this situation? And it's helping me. She's, like, kind of the polar opposite of Big Ange. But, mm -hmm. like, also same, instills, like, same wonder. Same energy. Yeah, of, like, caretaker. Powerful matriarch. Powerful matriarch. A, a focal point of something. She is managing... 50 million different things at once mm -hmm. with grace, with ease, with a smile on her face and a positive attitude. She is a sitcom star. She is. She was, she had a sitcom that lasted three episodes. That happens. But you know what? She still has that energy of like, that is like a certain type of 
performer. She's not going to let it get her down. No, she's she truly let anything get her down. She's like Valerie Cherish, but like fearsome and but self-aware, self-aware, and like the she's footage a- of their family together. I'm like in a state of utter disbelief because I'm like I can't under I cannot comprehend a family that can go out to dinner and get along and just like have a nice time together. I feel I do feel like it's fraught a little. I think I think they're I do think the Debros like from what I've seen of her like in the seasons I watched with her, I feel like they front a little and they're kind of phony sometimes. But her I, and Terry. Yeah. And I think like I they're like whole, they're like fake it till you make it and they're in it for the long haul marriage. They are, oh no, they are according but according to her on this season. Yeah, I just feel like the whole like our fam- our children are so you know, it's like but their children are like well mannered. No, they are. They're like beautifully behaved. But I just there's there is like a, a phoniness to it. But I also respect that phoniness. Yeah, I mean they look pretty functional. Yeah. I'm like aw- I'm comparing to my family that like can't do a single <laughs> thing without someone having a meltdown. Um, and, no, and especially in a show like that. With, yeah, with those families. She's really done it, and I. I'm inspired by her. I'm radicalized. It's such a weird place for her to end up. Orange County. Yeah. Like, I feel like she's either truly just like New York or LA, Mm -hmm. you know, because I think she's from either New York or like North Jersey. Like she's like, but Orange County seems like a nice place to end up. If you're like sick of the, yeah. if you're sick of the LA hustle, I'd and like you her want be... more bang for your buck, but you also want to actually be in like a beautiful area. Then, like, if you start driving south, it's jackpot. I'd like her to have. I would like her to book. I don't know if she wants to book. Yeah, she is booking. Are you kidding? She booked. She's back on OC. I know. She's killing it, doll. Um, speaking of just wild rich people, and then we'll get into the most wild bunch of all um hulu's documentary about the Falwells. oh god forbid it was everything okay i need to watch it that. is so incredible and truly like clutching pearls it's mm-hmm. it is a horny wild descent into like hell okay and it's for anyone who doesn't know and it, i'm not spoiling anything because it's in the trailer but Jerry Falwell Jr., who was the son of like the kind of quintessential uber wealthy televangelist, Jerry Mm -hmm. Falwell Sr., he is the president of Liberty University, which is like kind of the reason why Trump got won is because Jerry Falwell endorsed him and like got all the other Christian evangelicals to like go behind him. So he was really like integral in that. But he and his wife, who is the, you know, the, they're just this devout, very like fun, kind of like cool televangelist. They were not Tammy Faye. This no, is her no, no, no. son. No, or the no guy. that was Jim Baker. Oh, yeah. But this, oh, it's, but it's okay. the same. It's sort of the same thing of like, but, the, but like the Falwells were like, they're, I think they're what like the righteous gemstones are based on, just like uber wealthy. Where like, do they live? Virginia. Okay. Lynchburg. They were, it turns out, were, basically in like a thruple with this hot pool boy that they met in Miami who is this like very like Ben Affleck looking like Cuban American Giancarlo Mm -hmm. and he Jerry liked his to watch his wife get fucked and then like he was a total cock and like yeah and then have sex with her after the guy like finished in her okay and but they had like it became more intense and like their dynamic became like emotional and Jerry was basically like kind of gay. Like, like it felt like he had like, you're not, not gay if you're, yeah. I mean, you're, you're that's s- a shade of gay. Yeah. It's a shade of something to touch semen, even if it's in your wife's yeah. vagina and you're just right. Putting and, your dick in there afterwards, still kind of gay. And also like power to them, but the, it, but it was such, it was hypocrisy because they were telling everyone in their lives to like not drink, not have oh, yeah. sex. So anyway, it's just a wild story and it, it goes, it went on for like almost a decade. And this wow. guy is just like this super Do cute they have kids. Yeah. They have like th- four adult children that were like close with him. 
They would bring him around. He became part of their family. They told him they were helping him. They gave him millions of dollars to invest in like real estate. Damn. She would like they were, and it was like not just her that was like enamored with him. Like he was. Yeah. Yeah, and they would have like three way like kind of sexy phone calls all the time, and she he they would have sex all over their family house, mm-hmm. and she like Facetimed him once, and like you see the Facetime where she's got a glass of white wine and she strips down and she shows him all the places in their house where they fucked and like they fucked in her kid's room like in their kid's beds Ooh. and she's just but she's just like i'm like this bitch is i'm like honestly like go off queen she's like running around yeah, in this house fun. with this white wine being like over here and over there <laughs> and he recorded all of it so then what's the problem because you'll see okay Michael Cohn, Trump's lawyer, gets involved. It's like a, it was like a whole fucking thing, and it, Trump is so tied to it. Wow, it's really juicy and salacious. Okay, and yeah, multiple people have recommended this, and I've been meaning to watch it. So I'm gonna, I'll fast track that. And they have like reenactments, so they're like, you see, like usually it's like they love love a reenactment, but it's like from the nose down so you don't see their their full face but they're like it's kind of like drunk history like he's narrating what mm-hmm. happened and their lips match up to his voice and it's just really funny and corny okay it's so good cool it should be a mini series i'm sure it will be yeah um i love it i like horny republicans yeah i mean i think it would be like iconic if he wasn't like such a bad guy and like helped usher and like a bad era but and they were also like the blame is solely on his shoulders well no then he, so i don't want to he basically ends up blaming his wife and denies everything is like my wife fucked up so blame her don't get mad at me and turns out she was a predator a little bit like she was like grooming other like 19 20 year old boys that were friends with her son and like i think she assaulted one of them without his consent and was like sending them like they were too horny for their own. They good. were t- they were so horny. It was he was he assaulted I think a student. Damn. Well. Anyway, it's a wild fucking ride. It's very American. It's just Christian Christian ass it's Christian girl autumn Christian girl autumn the dark like the worst nightmare part of Christian girl autumn. The people that are like always telling you no, no, no. Are saying yes, yes, yes. It's safe to say that they're the ones also exactly saying yes, yes, yes. They're cucking. Mm -hmm. I was intrigued when I read an article or just saw a headline that said the oldest sentence in the world has been discovered. Whoa. And it was discovered on a comb, like an ancient comb. Whoa. And it was all about the comb getting rid of lice. That's the (laughs) The, first sentence. The first ever, the oldest known first ever written sentence that we know exists was about, it was like, may this comb get rid of the lice. May this comb make your hair less disgusting. I know. And so isn't that humbling? It is humbling and it's kind of like. It's classic. It's kind of cunty, which Mm -hmm. I like. It's it's giving cunt. Hope you keep on giving cunt. Keep on giving cunt, caveman. Like it was it yeah, was like a lice comb. It was basically like someone going, do something about that. It's like you hand someone you get it's a very <sighs> special comb. I like comb. that. Yeah. It's hopeful. Humans looking out for each other. Right? I'm, well, it's just grooming, be- big beauty industry. <laughs> Big beauty industry vibes. It was the Sephora of like. Oldest full sentence in first alphabet is about head lice. It says, may this ivory tusk root out the lice of the hair and the beard. May, may it indeed. Yeah. That's like my favorite is when they reenact, they recreated what an Egypt, ancient Egyptian sounded like. And it was like, <laughs> ah! <laughs> Have you heard that? It was like, oh, it was like, this is what King Tut sounded like. And he was just like, oh! <laughs> I was like, really? Okay. <laughs> yeah. First sentence ever found in the Canaanite language in Israel. Wow. Go off. Yeah. New Canaan. Everyone be having lice. Old Canaan. It's 
at least 3,700 years old. Wow. I thought like Gilgamesh was the first Mm. written. Early writing was in Mesopotamia, but that was like more symbols. Right. This was like in a language. Damn. I think like no symbols, like full words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah. Well. Which is like news. dirty animal creatures. You know what the, the other first sentence in recorded history was? What? Baby, I got your cab here. <laughs> was Ron stop. Ron stop. <laughs> I'm done. It was that was the first thing. Like, I'm like I'm done. I'm like I don't know. Like I'm done. I'm Carrie. I'm Lara. And you're listening to Sexy, Sexy Unique, Unique Podcast. Podcast. Jersey, Jersey Shore, Shore bitch. bitch. Ron, I'm done. Ron, no, that's it. I'm done. I'm like so. I'm like honestly, like don't know what to do. Wait. Also, back to OC, which I still am furious about the Noella firing mm-hmm. because there's one scene where she has Emily over to like talk about her like horrible divorce that she's going through Mm -hmm. and there it's the two of them like filming a scene and Noella goes, I want to talk, but I actually just have to whisper this entire time. And and, like, it's, it's the only thing I can do. So she has a full conversation where she's whispering and Emily is talking normally and films an entire scene. Like (laughs) why was she whispering? And I was like, this is iconic behavior. This is behavior that we cannot we can't afford to let this kind of behavior go just for the effect or I think she was like, it's the only way she won't cry, but it it was like, it was a crazy, it was a power move. It was the workings of a unwell individual, a mad, mad woman. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Damn. How can you, how can you say no to that? I, how that's like doll. You're mad. She's mad doll. Yeah. Um. Anyways, Snooki and Angelina are wearing sombreros. It's like three in the morning. They're taking shots. The and girlies S- are girling on the patio. Snooki takes a shot of a glass that has cigarette ash in it. I think she takes a swig of beer, and it's just a cig beer. Yeah, been there. Been there. Yeah, it's a bad feeling. Angelina is like one of the gals. It's like lasts for eight hours it lasts for eight hours she's also like you can tell that jay wow isn't on board a hundred percent so angelina has kind of become her like lady in waiting yeah that's like the best angelina can ever hope to be she's attending to jay wow is jay wow's assistant yeah she's like kind of Snooky and jay wow are like the duchesses and she's sort of like lady in waiting mm-hmm. sam is also a duchess yeah but sam's like duchess. yeah from like a flop county Snooky crawls into Vinny's bed. Well, first Snooky goes, I'm going to go test out all the beds. And she goes in and she just, her voice when she's blackout is so funny to me. She just goes, hello. <laughs> Wake up. Wake up. And Paul and Mike are like, get out of here. And then she goes to Vinny. And she's like, hey. Hey, I want to get in. You want to, can I come in? And he's like, yeah, come snuggle with me. She goes, so I went and put on my PJs and I crawled into Vinny's bed. And they hook up. They fuck. And then the next morning, really quick, I love how Snooky goes in to get her PJs from a laundry plastic laundry bag, like one of like folded, and she just goes in and reaches out. <laughs> the next morning, she's sitting on the couch, like really smug. She's Bella Hadid style, legs crossed, mm-hmm. and she goes, "I was in Vinny's bed last night to Angelina, who's like the perfect audience to report that to." And she goes, "When I tell you how big it was, it was like this." Vinny's packing. He has like a whale cock. Wow. We all know This all that. tracks. I didn't even think about it. I he's, honestly didn't think about his dick ever. He's known for his big dick. Really? Mm-hmm. He's but, got that BDE. But he doesn't have BDE. He kind of does. He has like someone that's just unhappy BDE. He has like the... He's not trying all that hard yeah, I guess. because the dick is so big. Yeah. But that's the BDE is where you, it can be the dark side that's of BDE true. The dark where side you of just BDE. don't try. Yeah. Because you just know you have a tripod. So it's like, whatever. Um, Speaking of BDE, Pete Davidson's dating Emirata. Really? Mm-hmm. They're pictured together? That's what Jezebel was reporting. Wow. They both broke up with their... Kim, he, she broke up with her husband and he broke up with Kim in August. 
So they've been dating the entire time. Mm. I want to trust you, but you've told me other people who up. are dating that aren't dating. Look it up. Um, no, I believe it. Okay. Good luck to them. Um, she said it was like fitting a watermelon into like a hole. Wow. Vinny. Love that for him. Um, the gals go to the beach, San Sammy. Angelina has that like, <laughs> she has those tats on her rib cage. Like a cherry blossom. <laughs> Angelina's just so like she's going yeah so she said this and then she also said that like she's like the way she got she's such a like New York she comes gossip. alive when it's time to gossip and like talk about the Ron and Sam situation Wow does not trust Angelina she, nor should she she knows and she's right she knows that she's eventually going to throw them under the bus and tell Sam everything and she's right to think that yeah. And Angelina's just squirming in her little boots because she knows she's in her little ballet flats squirming because she knows it's only time before she lets the cat out of the bag. Well, she she's such herself. a simplistic person in the sense that she just wants friendship and yeah. anyone that's nice to her. The setup for it has been so bad because she, her personality is so grating and awful that no one wants to be friends with her. So they all treat her like shit. But then it gives her no loyalties and she'll yeah. throw anyone under the bus if it means that she gets to have like common ground with another person. If you which show is her why you have to like you always have to treat like the wild card person kindly. Yeah, she's so she's, that eventually they won't tell on you. Mm -hmm. She's definitely like it's like the school it's like when people are like you should befriend like the weird dudes that have school shooter vibes because you don't want them to come for you later on I she's did. like the I social did. equivalent of a school shooter i did that i mean that's like the smart thing to do <laughs> is you always want to be like hi i was like hi love you <laughs> hey hey you look cute today look cute today yeah you never know. You never know. You want people to have loyalty to you. At the end of the day, you mm. want to make sure you don't fall in the line of fire. It's like when B in Billy Madison, when Steve Buscemi crosses him off and puts lipstick on. Yeah. <laughs> That's, That's literally true. It is, it's, it's, you should always be thinking about this. And the older you get, like the less you will be in a school shooting situation, but you will be around like, the social equivalent of them and you mm -hmm. really have to like play it right play it cool because you they are you never know they have no loyalty and they you don't know they're unpredictable as hell mm -hmm. they're fucking feral animals um sitch and sam sit outside and he basically tells her to her face that like ron has cheated on her and done all this shit that's in the note i go it's time to be real sam <laughs> sam and then Sam starts crying and she, I'm like, of course it takes a man to tell her. But I still don't think that she really believes him. No, but I feel like she's more convinced. Like, I'm like, of course she can't like that. That tracks that like the girls basically are like. This sucks. You this need sucks. to get out of here. And she's like, nah. And then Mike's like, this is bad. And she's like, you're right. He's like, he goes and hooked up and then he left. And she goes, he hooked up. What? He, hooked up. And he goes, uh, what did the letter say? And she goes, said he hooked up. And he goes, well, then that's what he did. Good for him for just saying it. I know. Sam, she goes, I'm done with it. I'm done. I'm done. It was I'm for done. the hundred thousandth time. Angelina, <laughs> at one point, she, she said, Ron's going out with any Tom, Dick, or Harry. Snooki says she wants to confess to writing the letter. Snooki's having... Like she's a having huge yeah. come to Jesus like moral quandary. I get that because that would be me. Yeah, I would. I get that. Like, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be able to hold like that secret no. back. And I actually would get pleasure out of being like, oh, finally, we're honest. The cat's out of the bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Also, like, you're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Angelina's like, Jay was like, why do you feel like that? Like, what the fuck? And Angelina's like. The girl, the girl got the letter. So what are you gonna do? She's hanging out with any Tom, Dick, or Harry. She's still with the kid. With so the what? Kid. She goes the girl. She keeps calling <laughs> Sammy the girl. the girl. She's in love with the kid. The so like, what are you gonna do? That's what they say. The girls. The girl got the letter. The kid. The kid. I love the kid. 
I um, love the girl. Our friend, our friend, our roommate. Yeah. The girl. Snooki's so mad at both Jen and Angelina. She's just like She's silent it. mad. And fucking JWoww goes, go. She goes to Angelina. She goes, go inside and get Sam and tell her, tell her we want to talk to her. I was like, this is when Angelina became the servant. Mm-hmm. JWoww and Sam start to fight. JWoww you know, goes in. You know it's brewing. I would not step to JWoww ever. Are you kidding me? Ever. Like, never in a lifetime. No. She would hurt you so bad. She'll hurt you with words, with her fists. But Sam, I think Sam's, Sam has a lot of rage. Well, Sam's a soccer player. Yeah, she's like athletic and could probably like kick you in the shins. I think she has high T at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And she... <laughs> They're fighting, and then Jay Wells like, "What? You're so mad because I told you your fucking man was out there hooking up with everyone, blah blah blah." And then Ron chimes in. He goes, "I was fucking single. I was single." And I was like, "Ron, stop, please." She goes, "Your man would put his dick into other chicks." And Ron is then blaming Jay Wow and Snooky for not telling her. Because if you're so, then why didn't you tell her? And she goes, "Because we weren't there." Ron is disgusting. Yeah, I love him. He takes no accountability at all and he's blaming. I love, I was single. I was single. So then you're saying you did do all those things. Then Sam has her, I know what you did last summer moment. She goes, who did it? Who did it? <laughs> what are you telling? Who what are you did waiting it then? For? Who wrote the letter then? Who did it? And Sam, then and no one says anything. Sam's also mad at the girls over Ronnie. Mm -hmm. Of course. Yeah. So then it, everyone. She, goes, she was who did it? And then everyone is just silent. And she goes, all I know is a lot happened to me and it's embarrassing. And then she walks away. And she goes in and fugues in her bed for like 10 minutes. And then she comes <laughs> back out and Ron like goes up to her and he like kind of tries to like breastfeed. He's like, do you want, do you want me to be there for you? Like what? Yeah. Do you want to talk? And she's like, no, but she does. And she comes out quiet as a cat. It's very like, she's like, yeah. peeking around the corner. Yeah. She goes, I'm just like, I don't like to trust anyone right now. Everyone in the house is being so shady. And he's like, I'm being shady. And she goes, yeah, ever, all you are. And like, I'm like, it's like, I like, don't like know what to like do. Snooki goes, we fucked up. We should never have given her that letter. Cause she doesn't appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> She's right. She is. She's not. Don't waste energy on Don't people that anywhere. aren't at the right vibration. Mm -hmm. Sam goes, to be honest, this letter's destroyed me. It's mentally and physically destroyed me. I'm like, you like, destroyed yourself. Yeah, your relationship is destroying you. This man is destroying you. Not the not these words of like your people who care about your well-being. You fucking freak. <laughs> Ron goes, all I can do is give us space and hope time will bring us back together. I was like... It will and it will and it shouldn't. Yeah. But it will anyways because your union is ungodly. <laughs> <laughs> um, Vinny keeps getting eye infections. I'm like, maybe stop like farting on your pillow. Yeah, like wash your sheets. Wash your sheets. Wash your sheets in your face regularly. I saw something last night that said you should only wash your sheets twice or every two weeks. I was like, I wash mine every week. I wash mine every two weeks. Mm. I would wash them more if I had the time. But two weeks, I mean, it's clearly healthy. I'm doing good. He, Vinny has not washed his sheets and I think he is like, my mom does my laundry, so I don't know how to take care of myself when she's not around. Oh my God, can you imagine how smelly his sheets are? But also he goes to this eye appointment and she goes, well, you have dry eyes. <laughs> I love all of that drama for just being like, put some eye drops in. I know. He is truly baby. He is baby. Everyone goes out to the club. Angelina hooks up with a guy named Jose, who's actually kind of cute. And Jose's like down to clown with Angelina. He's in love with Angelina. He's like, hi, honey. And she has yes, no respect dear. for him mm -mm. because he's he's like nice to her. No. And she's like, yeah, yeah, I don't really like whatever. She's like, get away from me. Get away from me. I love it. I like seeing her being adored mm -hmm. and then just like shitting on the person that's giving her attention. Yeah. It's a good spot. It's like where she shines. It's her love language. When they get back to the house, she's like, yeah, we're not going to hook up tonight, so you can go. And he's like, all right, honey. She's like laying on his leg. She's, ew, your leg's up. It's like in my face. Can you like move your leg? <laughs> I was like, 
I live for you. She's thriving. She's at her best when she's owning a man. Mm-hmm. When she's cucked a man, mm-hmm. essentially. Mike hooks up with this bl- this really drunk blonde girl who I feel really bad for. Her. They should have at least blurred her. Yeah, that was they were wrong for this edit. They were really wrong. He goes, he takes her back. He sits her in the smush room, and he goes, "I want to have." She's like, "I want to get it in, but I'm not. I'm not in fight and shape yet." Like, so he makes a full plate of food that looks like a plate of Thanksgiving leftovers. Yeah, like a huge yeah. dinner plate of food like a 3000 calorie meal eats that whole plate while she's just waiting then goes and has sex with her and then goes back out laughs with the guys about she passes out how he's gonna like now get a cab to tell her to leave yeah and then goes back in and is like hey baby hey baby he hey, goes, baby you doing okay you good he goes like hey baby uh and then he can't say it he's just like <laughs> He's frozen for like 30 seconds and he goes, so a uh, baby, I got, I, there's a cab outside waiting for you. I called you a taxi. And she goes, you set that up for me? And he goes, yeah, I set it all up for you, baby. That's actually like really nice. Like he thinks that he's being a dick, but I actually think that that's like very gentlemanly and nice. No, it's just the whole like laughing about it with your bros yeah. and like using it as a flex. But I'm like, well, the joke's on you because you're paying for like the taxi or the Uber. I think it was more to me like the grossness of like fueling up, <laughs> like eating like basically exactly. like sweet potatoes. No, eating like turkey Tur- yeah, like and a- cranberry sauce, mashed potatoes and gravy, sweet potato casserole, green bean casserole, a, chicken. a Caesar salad, <laughs> a chocolate a, cream pie, a, a piece of pumpkin pie, a piece of chocolate cream, ca- a piece of pecan pie. And then a protein shake. Yeah. And then going in, I hope he brushed his teeth. Yeah. Can you imagine the coming out of his sweat? Like the, the not only the alcohol, but like the turkey juice coming out of his floor. <laughs> His underside? Like a burp. Do you think his underside... I think he takes care of his underside. I think he's pretty clean. But like in that moment, it might have been a little... Post-club sweatiness, then sitting and having a full (laughs) turkey dinner is not the... No, he was emanating smells. I think you really shouldn't eat that much before you hook up with someone. Mm -hmm. No. Like when you're in your 20s, I feel like it's like fine. We haven't encountered many like gastrointestinal issues. But the older you get, the less you should be eating pre-sex. It's like wait a half an hour after you eat before you go in the ocean. Yeah. Wait till post-sex and the person is left to like eat your... Gorge your fucking shame. Your leftovers. post-fuck shame. Um, um, Snooky. The girls have to cook because Sam... They get Sam, up really early. Sam said, what if the girls all cook next Sunday? We're cooking. Snooki basically has a marker that's like the size of her hand and she's drawing and she calls up her friend back in in New York, who's a professional cook. And he is giving her a recipe for penne a la vodka. And he's like, all right, first you got to take the tomato paste. And she's writing, how do you spell tomato? And she writes, tomato. And her handwriting is like size 30. She was paste. Paste. And he goes, tomato paste. Ah. Ah. So they go and they like go to like a liquor store and they have the shopping carts with the, <laughs> the like big pole to keep it inside. Jay Wow goes, grocery shopping is awful. And I was like, I feel you. Jay Wow is, she is beyond triggered because she doesn't want to be doing this. Sam is nowhere to be found. So this was her fucking idea. And she's Classic punishing, Sam. she's punishing Nicole and Jen for being good friends to her. And Jen is also, in this moment, cooking, head of the kitchen, mother of the roost, I was like, she is mother to all of these bitches. She's, she's literally one of the original mothers. She's literally Hecate Peg. <laughs> <laughs> she's cooking up a feast. And it looks good. It's, she's like breading cutlets and like frying them and putting them in the oven. I was like, she's making like chicken parmesan. Like she is doing the damn thing. With a, just a hateful, She's, resentful <laughs> undertone. That's probably how a lot of our moms made food growing up. She goes, right? Why With am just I like cooking? resentment. Yeah. Why am I cooking in anger here all by myself? She said. <laughs> I was like, I asked myself that same thing. She goes, hey, Sam, you want to come help? Because we did all the shopping today. And she goes, ah, I really feel like it. Sam's face. Every time j asks, she goes, she goes and sits outside, like won't 
lift a finger to help with a single thing. She's very, it's very New York on the bed. She goes, hey, can you go, the groceries are here. Can you like take two minutes and bring them inside? And she goes, I'm just hanging out outside for a second. Yeah. She goes, she's, I'm not doing it. I'm going to make my salad. I'm not doing anything else. She's provoking her. I hate this attitude. She goes, I made my salad. I'm like, you put. She's like. Yeah. She chopped up a tomato and put it on some lettuce. <laughs> Meanwhile, Snooki's like the kid in Celebrity Chef, <laughs> Top Chef Junior, the kid going with the bang. <sighs> Remember that meme? That, oh, they're in the kitchen. <laughs> Snooki's, that is Snooki. Snooki's running around going, oh, Chef J. Wow. She oh, no. Mamma Mia. Mamma Mia. She's going to be so mad. And, and J. Wow's just sitting J. there. J. Wow's literally like breading chicken cutlets. And Why am I just, cooking over here with all in the anger all by myself? <laughs> I was like, damn. Angelina is also doing nothing, right? Yeah, but for some reason, I've gotten so accustomed to her lack of participation that it doesn't bug me as much. Sam was annoying because this was like truly her, her idea. idea. Yeah. That she literally just said to get in good with the guys and be like, yeah, what if we cooked? But then she's actually not going to do shit. I'd so, give her a beat down too. Wow. I forgot J. Wow was still dating Tom. Me too. And they they talk on the phone and she's like she's like, Yeah, J. Wow, Jen's or Sam's just like not doing shit. But we just cooked all day. I want Snooky to make me a batch of her garlic knots. Ooh. I, I was like, I'll bet they're really good. She goes, Oh, mamma mia. Um they eat dinner and all the guys are impressed. And and Sam's like pouting, just like eating with such resentment and hatred. She refuses to eat any of the food that Jay Wow cooked. She's only eating that shit salad she made. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You're such a bitch. She's like, the sweetest bitch you'll ever meet. She truly and is like back with Ronnie, like sitting next to him. They're like giving each other pecks on the lips every once in a while. It's, my, it's like... It's truly sick. You're sick for this? You make me sick. You're not... Jay Wow's not looking at you being like, damn, I want what she has. She's no. looking at you being like, have You're some a respect mess. for yourself. You also just like alienated the two people that were like truly looking out for you in this house. They care about you. Sammy goes to work with Angelina on a rainy day. And can I just say really quick? Yeah. Sam is, I've never seen a more Jersey girl in my life sitting with a William Patterson hoodie, sitting like up on the like counter of a going like this she's going yeah i want to go back to jersey i miss jersey i just I'm wish like, we could go away like i miss jersey i want to go back i want to go back to jersey she's now sucking up to angelina because she has no other friends <laughs> and angelina's loving it and i was like honestly sammy is literally tanya from the white lotus she is she is she's like Did does not yeah She's like, tell me what's going on. And then gets the, she begs everyone, please tell me what's going on. If you know anything, gets a letter confirming everything that happened. Doesn't want to hear it. And then gets mad. And then is now Angelina's her assistant that she's like, you just have to be here while I like sleep. She's very negative. So much negativity. Too negative. I like when she goes, stay on the couch. And I got them vanity fair. I was so triggered. She's amazing. The assistant. Jennifer Coolidge. Yeah. The assistant's amazing. Um, just like the type of people that like you can't they like can't be alone. Like you have to like sit in the room. Her assist the that girl is such a good actor. She's good. Haley Lou Richardson. <laughs> I love when she was a she goes, What happened, Tanya? I thought I was gonna get a reading. And she goes, You don't want one. You don't want one. So negative. <laughs> Get you. And then she goes, I don't think you can really say that word anymore. And she goes, I also am obsessed with um, Megan Fahey, who plays Daphne. Oh, yeah. I love her. The games. I'm obsessed with her. I'm sad because now the happy couple is like, you saw that you see the cracks. They're scheming. I was just hoping that they would be like the chill and happy. But yeah. then now you're like on the other side. It's you, truly every episode's like a play. It is. Aubrey Plaza is... She's really good. I'm just floored by her. Um, Sammy's like, just tell me, like, 
do you know who wrote the letter? Who and wrote Angelina's it? like, don't make me say it. <laughs> she's like, I didn't do it, but like, don't make me say who did. She goes, it was Snooki and Jen, right? Like they did it. And Jay and Angelina goes, but you can't tell them I told you. I'm like, you too. You too, flops. Typical. Typical Ange. I can't believe she lasted actually this long in the season. I thought for sure she was off I know. quicker, but she's like, her presence is like known. Like she's on season two. She did, I'm ready for her to get dismissed. Angelina did exactly what she was asked not to do. Mm-hmm. You can trust her. To ruin everything. To always do the yeah. one thing you don't want her yeah. to do. She'll do it. So that night they go out and Melissa Sorrentino, Mike's little sis, who's super cute and fun. She comes to visit. She's visiting from Jersey. I'm curious as to what their relationship is like present day. Cause she hasn't been on family vacation now that I think about it. And I wonder if like the drama between him and his brother, like tore him apart from his other siblings or what the deal is. His one of his brothers came out as gay. Yeah. Love that. Um, but I think he's like, was unwell. it the brother that he was yeah. in trouble with? No, he, I think it was another brother. Who's like the older one. Who's like kind of, unwell and like crazy huh but he came out you're like we don't want him (laughs) (laughs) i don't i don't i don't claim him um yeah melissa comes out with everyone and immediately Vinny is like awkward and weird around her because she because he actually kind of likes her Mm -hmm. or like thinks she's cute and feels insecure so they go out there's like another unfortunate moment of like trans panic Oh, I didn't catch that. Well, I yeah, was like Mike, half paying attention. Mike basically like makes out with this woman at the club or like they canoodle. And I think all the housemates claim she was a, a trans woman. Sexy. But they are like repulsed by it. They're just being like really. They're clowning gnarly. him for it. Yeah, they're gnarly. And it's, Ugh. it's, I mean, yeah, it's bad. But then Mike's like, you know what? I didn't know. And I was like, honestly, Mike's. Accepting slayed. King. Yeah. yeah. She was this glam woman in the club blurred out and she was like holding court and he was like into her vibe. Honestly, that's sexy. And, and they that's all shamed like him for the it. The hottest thing you can possibly do is like make out with like a gorgeous trans woman. Yeah. And all they all shamed him for it. They have a lot of gay panic in this cast. They all. They're not very. Women up. included. Yeah. Except if they're going to like a pride event. Except if they're going to like wear clothes and like appropriate (laughs) i don't think they even appropriate they just go and grace the gays with their presence for like the last 10 minutes before last call but they don't want to they like them but they don't want to be them yeah so Um, polly gets blackout rare a rare case of polly i love it when polly gets like his eyes no longer focus he's like staring into the void he Mm -hmm. like is walking in any direction Angelina takes that as an opportunity to just like suck face with him. Yeah. She that's that made me uncomfortable. Yeah. They get back to the house. (laughs) JWoww. Uh Sammy's talking shit when they get back to the house. JWoww goes in the other room and then I think Vinny approaches her and he's like, yo. JWoww calls her boyfriend Tommy. She's wearing boots. She's boots on cowboy phone boots. dialed up Tommy yeah. other line. <laughs> and she's like, everyone like, like t- just recapping the night. And then someone's like, then Angelina's like, she's on the phone. Angelina comes in, sits down next to Sammy. And she goes, she's on the phone, like talking shit about everyone. And then Sammy's like, why are you talking shit about everyone? And then Vinny was like, I'm going to go tell Jay Wow what's happening right now. And he goes and he goes, Hey, Jay Wow, people are saying you're like talking shit. And she goes right into WWE I, mode. It was, I was, the switch. I was so inspired by the switch. It was so elegant and graceful. And she just, she, she just, walks back, she stomps back into the, turns around, throws whatever was in her hand like against the wall. Her face, it's like this. I'm like, Oh, she was like, What? And then he said, they're talking shit. She goes. Yeah. She goes into full China mode Mm -hmm. and she runs. She just stomps her way back in and she goes, you talking shit about me? 
you guys out here talking shit? And Sammy's like, yeah, you're on the phone, like, talking shit about everyone. She was like, I literally wasn't. I literally wasn't. And then she's like, you're just, you're just, she's basically like, you're just full of, like, lots of gossip because you're the one that wrote the letter. And then they have a letter fight. A lot of this going on. Mm -hmm. And then they have a full on brawl. Brawl. And honestly, to even think that you will step to JWoww and she won't just destroy you. Foolish. Is a fool's errand because <laughs> she, Sammy, like walks up to her, like they swing and kind of grab yeah. hair in one move. JWoww has her hair and she's down on the floor. That, I was true. I, I went, <gasps> When I watched, just no the switch, mm -hmm. the throwing. I was like, Ooh, it's the over. <laughs> she should not have done that. Hearing the keys jangle, just going. She goes, boom, 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 boom. Whoa! You just know some people you don't fuck with them, and Jay Wow immediately reads to me like you don't fuck with this person. No. I'm not like a physical fighter by any stretch of the imagination. So I don't fuck with anyone, but like, especially if I were, I would know be, I'd be strategic about it. Yeah. Sammy's just dumb. I wouldn't fuck with Sammy either. Cause she has that athletic. Like, yeah, I wouldn't fuck with anyone in this house. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Maybe Mike. You'd fight him. No, not fight him, but like jostle him. Yeah, you'd grope him. No, like verbally, Grab him a little verbally bit. jostle. Tease him. Tease him? I wouldn't fight oh, him. Oh, I would go, I would be getting in on the teasing. That's like the thing that they do that I'm like, I love when they do that because they get like really, they go, they'll go there with each other. But you can only do that if you're like super, super close. So I would, I would aim to be best friends to get on just like clowning levels with them. But I would never in a million years fight any of these people. No, I wouldn't fight anyone. Mm -mm. Nor I. I have no desires to tussle. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. We're not tussling. We're not like, we're not the tussling type. Mm -mm. We don't do, we don't tussle on this pod. We just, we'll do a verbal tussle, but <laughs> I'm like not getting in the mix. In a physical capacity. No way. Um, well, Angelina, her, her days are numbered, we'll just say. The clock is ticking. I think next week is her departure. Maybe one more episode, but she's, she hangs on. She really did hang on for longer than I gave her credit for. <sighs> but her, day her fate is sealed. How on earth, though... I can't believe that there's just so many more seasons and so much more of the Ron and Sam relationship. Oh, it's endless. They go to Italy. They go back to the shore. They go. There's a lot coming. Yeah. So get Craziness. ready. Craziness. Hold your horses. Put on your jersey pants. Mm -hmm. Buckle meet us, up. Meet us down in Miami next Buckle week. Buckle up because we're in it with the kids. We're in it with the kids. I'll miss the kid. I'll miss the kid. The girl got the letter. The girl got the, girl the letter. The girl got the letter. She's out there with every Tom, Dick, or Harry. And meanwhile, she's in love with the kid. She's in love with the kid. <laughs> Sometimes you do just need a Staten Island broad to break things down for you. Mm -hmm. Explain like, I want her to explain the moon landing to me. Yeah. The kid landed and it was like, he got, he put the flag on the moon and was like, I'm the kid. Yeah. He touched down, Neil, and the kid was like, I'm going to do this. I'm putting this flag here. This <laughs> belongs to Earth now. Neil. Neil. J420. Neil. There was a TikTok of some girl like dancing and mouthing like the entire interpretation of the J420 back and forth. And it was really good. For Jersey Shore? Yeah. Wow. It was incredible work. So much art on TikTok. Well, Lars... I'll meet you down in Miami next week. I'll see you there. Ciao. Bye.